This programme was made with support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund. On the Heritage Channel tonight, a walking tour of Cleethorpes with Emma Lingard, a spectacular seaside festival, and Gemma walks the gangplank in Grimsby. Welcome to the Heritage Channel, where we explore the fascinating history of North East Lincolnshire in a monthly roundup of news, views and local stories. Last month we explored the oldest pubs in Cleethorpes, and tonight we're on a pub crawl over land and water in Grimsby. But first we catch up with other heritage news around the region. Back to Nunsthorpe School at Grimsby Central Library is a collection of over 400 images depicting life at this historic Grimsby School between the 1930s and 1950s. The photos, taken by one of the teachers, Mr Harold Hillam, show school life, sports days, Rose Queen ceremonies, school open days and more formal class group photographs. Never Ends is a memorial exhibition celebrating the life and work of Judith Tucker, who died last year. Held at Cleethorpe's Library's Albert Room throughout May and June, you can see a unique collection of Judith's work from the Humberston Fitties, which she explored with her partner, poet Harriet Tarlow, and local artist Linda Ingham. If you enjoy history and walking, then join historian Gemma Lingard on a guided tour of Cleethorpes on the 2nd of June. You will learn how this popular resort grew from three fishing hamlets to become a place to go for its waters and health benefits, and how the arrival of the railways helped shape the town. Did you know the town had two windmills close to the cliffs, and now oysters were a staple trade? Book now on the Grimsby Tours website. The exciting educational project that celebrates the legacy of Sir Edward Watkin, the man who made Cleethorpes, can still be seen at the number one pub in Cleethorpes until the 15th of July. And places are still available at the Grimsby Fishing Heritage Centre to join the new group for adults with additional needs who will learn all about the museum and discuss the exhibitions and the work that goes into bringing North East Lincolnshire's history to life. A brand new Heritage and Construction Skills event is scheduled for Saturday the 15th of June at Kings Hall Cleethorpes. The event will showcase some of the trades available to people in the area and introduce several of the organisations behind funding for many of our local projects. Organisers North East Lincolnshire Council are keen to show some of the many recent schemes and projects that have focused on the restoration of the town's historic buildings. Stories of the Water, an exhibition of photography from the Women's Photography Collective at My Big Picture on Bethlehem Street, is part of the Festival of the Sea on the 22nd of June. This rich programme of events includes standout contemporary dance inspired by local tales and Message in a Bottle, a chance to write your own seafaring story. Live music, craft fairs and a host of other activities promise to make this a memorable event for the whole family. And the Heritage Channel will be there to capture the atmosphere and the highlights. Last month, we discovered some of the long-lost pubs in Cleethorpes, including our viewers' choice, the lifeboat. This month, we're in Grimsby, and Gemma Lingard explores the spooky staircase and walks the pirate's gangplank to discover Grimsby's oldest hostelries and reveal which was your favourite. Last month, we featured some of the oldest and best-loved pubs of Cleethorpes. This month, we're in Grimsby. So why not join me on a nostalgic pub crawl as we take a look at some of the town's historic drinking establishments and find out which one was voted your favourite. Anyone for a pint?
Did you know that the oldest surviving pub in Grimsby is the White Hart, dating back to the 18th century? By the mid 1800s, it was one of more than 30 pubs within the town centre and its popularity continued right into the mid 20th century. But it hasn't always been a pub. Originally, the White Hart was a private residence and over the years, it's also been a bank, a home for refugee Belgian nuns during the Second World War. It's also been briefly a girls' school and it's rumoured to be haunted. Jill Mackledon says, the White Hart and the Exchange were my favourite pubs in the 70s. Michael Andrews was a regular at this terrific pub before he left Grimsby. We're now just down the road at the Yarborough Hotel, which is located next to Grimsby's train station. And I'm sure many of you have enjoyed a pint or two before hopping onto the train. Or is that staggering onto the train? The original hotel was built by the second Earl of Yarborough in 1851 to cater for the increased trade from the railway. The hotel was a symbol of the town's transition from the 18th century fishing village into a great Victorian port, but it was very nearly demolished. Eleven years into its history, the hotel became linked to one of Grimsby's sensational scandals, the Yarborough Riot in 1862. Election fever gripped an angry crowd which erupted into violence outside the Yarborough Hotel. Rioters used stair banisters as weapons and hotel rooms were used to treat the injured. As the railway boom subsided, so did the hotel's fortunes and its future looked uncertain. Plans were announced in the 1960s to demolish it and make way for new shops and offices. But fortunately, the Yarborough became a listed building and still survives today as part of a well-known national chain. Philip Bellamy thinks that it is one of the best historic buildings associated with the railway. It now sees more custom than it has done in literally centuries. Meg Bainbridge remembers dinner dances in the 60s, fantastic nights. But did you know that the Yarborough is also rumoured to be haunted? A paranormal investigative team claimed to have seen a figure dressed in a white shirt and wearing glasses. Some say there are even poltergeists in the building, and others have seen and heard small children in the hotel and down in the cellar. Despite these ghostly tales, many of you have fond memories of this venue, including Alan Redgrift, who remembers his early days drinking in Winston's bar at Yarborough Hotel. We're now here in the old marketplace outside the Tivoli Tavern, which used to be called the Globe Inn, and it became a Grade 2 listed building back in June of 1999. This pub was frequently used by farmers who travelled to Grimsby to trade their grain crops at the nearby corn exchange. At one time, the farmers were said to have weighed their produce on a set of scales that was suspended from a hook in one of the beams. Lots of you have great memories of the Tivoli Tavern, including Neville Carrick, who says, I started going in there in 1970. I was in there today, the best pub in town. And it was Paul McHugh's first ever workplace in 2001. Many pubs used to be located on Victoria Street, but no longer exist, including the Black Swan here on the corner of Victoria Street and Flottergate. Known affectionately by the locals as the Mucky Duck, it was probably even older than the White Hart. The original building is said to have dated back to 1699. Some license holders of the Black Swan included William Bates in 1814, said to be the oldest landlord in the town. Mucky Duck was rebuilt in the mid-1920s, but finally demolished in the early 1970s. Some of you have really fond memories of the Black Swan, including Ron Granger, who remembers having his first pint with his dad in there, and Diane Conlon, who met her husband in there and celebrates her 51st wedding anniversary in June of this year. Graham Wardle says, the Black Swan was definitely my favourite. Another long lost pub is the Friar Tuck, which was located in the Riverhead Shopping Centre, that's now Freshney Place. The Friar Tuck traded for less than two decades, but many local people have happy memories of this popular pub. 
It first opened in November of 1970 by the first and only landlord, ex-RAF man Peter Ian Williamson. Ian was well known for keeping an orderly house and the pub gained a reputation for excellent food, but there were concerns about nighttime security in the shopping centre. Other sites within the centre were considered, but it was decided not to have a licensed premises within the shopping centre. The Friar Tuck finally closed in November 1988, 18 years to the day since it first opened. Jane Lehman said, My favourite job ever, working as a waitress in the restaurant, happy, happy days and treasured memories. If you're into rock music, then you've probably had a pint or two here at the old Lloyd's Arms at the top end of Victoria Street. A well-loved drinking establishment and live music venue still popular amongst the locals. And for our final pub today, I'm going to be walking the gangplank. Arr! We're here at the barge, which is moored with a distinctive tilt to its starboard side. And if you step on board, you can definitely feel it. That or you've had too many pints. Fancy another? So the history of the barge as I know it is uh, it used to be a, a rice transporter. So it transported uh, rice and grain before it was docked here in, I think, 82. Because it's been an independent, a truly independent pub uh, and a, a community hub, really. I've had people come down and, and say that stepping through the barge doors is like stepping into a time portal and you're back in the 90s. It's a, it's a great rock bar that's always been a bit of a staple point of the alternative community specifically. And some of the things that I think are really, really nice about the full circle moments of the barge being such a big part of the community is above the bar we've got all the pictures of some of the old regulars and stuff and now we get people come down that have just turned 18, 19 and they're ordering drinks and they look up and they go, oh that's my mum or oh that's my dad and this is a, the place where a lot of people met. The talking point which is the old cooker that they used to use when they were working on the boats. Uh, the cocktail menus haven't changed for about 30 years. They're still on a, a printout that was done on like word art back in the day so we've still got like iconic barge twists I guess on, on cocktails. It's just generational like everyone finds the barge and everyone finds it a comfortable place to be and a comfortable place to come and hang out and, and drink so we get families in, um, grandparents, parents, the kids um, and yeah it's just a real staple point of the community. So that concludes our whistle stop tour of some of the oldest pubs in Grimsby. But which was the favourite? As voted for by our viewers. I can now reveal that the most popular pub in Grimsby voted for our Heritage Channel viewers is the Black Swan, aka the Mucky Duck. So we hope that you've enjoyed our town centre pub crawl and we'll see you next time. Cheers. And best loved pubs. More. It was one of more. One of more. One of more. One of more. At the mid 1800s, the hotel became linked. Sound effects. Well, that's all from the Heritage Channel tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel or join our Facebook group to make sure you don't miss any of our programmes. In this month's episode on our sister channel, Billboard TV, we meet one of the region's most respected poets. Hugh Richards reviews the latest book releases and Amy Winehouse features in Film Review. From everyone at the Heritage Channel, thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you next month for more Heritage news, views and local stories. <laughs>